Time to make a birch wand for this bit. If you are new to the channel, I am making every single Harry Potter wand from the films, from the correct woods. And this week we have Dolores Umbridge, and I think she has to be the most hated character in the whole franchise. So this is a piece of silver birch, and it's a bit rotten, so I'm trying to only use that dark heartwood. And in fact, on TikTok, a lot of people said this is appropriate because Umbridge is so rotten. The scientific name is Betula Pendula. Try saying that. Now these are the bits I've cut and I think they're going to be too soft but they're also really wet. How was it? Wet. So what we've got to do is check the moisture content and I've got this moisture meter. So these are really good for seeing how hydrated you are. So I am... Oh god I need to drink something. much better. So the tree came down about 10 months ago but at 56% it is still really wet so I'm gonna have to dry it down a lot more before I can use it. So I've just cut that piece into half and you may be thinking ha, that's not half you're about five mil short and you missed the cutting line but I actually like to use grams to measure my wood so you can see that one is 221 grams and this one is also 221 grams. I'm actually going to use the microwave to try and dry these two pieces of wood a bit quicker. So all you've got to do is set it to birch and just give it a few test runs, see how it turns out. Now you may be thinking, oh, I'm not going to watch this whole microwave countdown, are we? That's like watching paint dry. And you are in fact watching paint dry because I've been decorating my whole workshop to try and make all these videos just a bit more aesthetically pleasing and hopefully it will really help my social media. So the microwave actually took a bit too long, so I actually kept these inside overnight on top of the agar, and that basically just dries them out a little bit better. And you can see it's lost 50 grams in weight, and that's quite a good indication of how much water has actually come out of this one piece of wood. And often when it dries as well, you'll see here it's gone a bit undulated, so these were perfectly flat sides. But you can see there it's just gone all sort of lumpy, and that's to be expected really. Again. We've got some cracks in this end, but that's okay because I can use this end of the wood for the wand. Same with this side, it's not too bad. We've got one crack in the end, so I'll try and avoid that end, but this one's dried a bit better. And the next step now is just to cut these down to sides a bit more, try and remove more of this waste white wood here. A fun fact about Umbridge is that her name actually has two meanings. Her first name, Dolores, is Spanish and means sorrow or aching or pain. And her surname, Umbridge, can actually be spelt differently and it's a British expression meaning to take offence. So it's all rather fitting for her character. You can see I've got all dark heartwood now. There's a bit on the corner here but that will just turn out. But I'm going to stick them into the microwave again just for a quick blast for this. Still a bit damp. So you can still see there's a bit of moisture actually coming out. You see in the centre there? But I'm happy enough to use this and turn this now because it'll be dry enough. It'll still dry a bit on the lathe, but the, the important thing is it's not going to bow or twist. It would have done that already. Or split as well. So I actually really like Umbridge's wand. It's really pretty. It's all turned. It's nice and round and actually has a really nice proportion. So I wanted to share a few tips as a production wood turner of like how I'd go about making these. So you might have seen some other videos, I always have a storyboard which helps me mark key details onto the wand blank. And you can see here, I'm just taking all the key transition points, marking them out as accurate as I can before putting little grooves in. And these grooves, again, they need to be super accurate, but it allows the pencil just to fall in, then I can mark up the wood and it's really accurate, especially for repeat work if I was making a batch of these wands, for example. And I've just put some depth gauges on there as well, but most of the time I actually use my calipers just because it's slightly quicker. Now the blanks in the lathe, I can quickly knock the corners off and start marking out this wand. So I'm obviously going to make this wand in two halves. And the first step is to make a little hollow in the end of the wand to fit that rose quartz. So I'm just gently holding that with a bit of wax in the rag, opening that out until the rose quartz fits really nicely, or as best as I can get it. Once that's done, I can bring the tailstock up and continue marking out. So I'm going to use my storyboard as a depth gauge here. And you see, once it gets to the right size, that storyboard just glides over the wood and then I can stop. So you can imagine this could be like a newel post or a staircase spindle or even like a table leg. So it's just that really nice shape. And I'm gonna show you some sort of, it's quite a nice one to turn as well. There's a lot of sort of good skills to learn. And the first one is marking out. So you can see here, 
this happens a lot with sort of staircase spindles or anything like that it's actually a straight line which along the profile there's some really fiddly details uh i'm going to gloss over the center bit for the time being but as you can see here i'm doing them in halves so you can see there i've marked out the two diameters so i had to redo this top one because it wasn't quite perfect when i did this side I, I scribed it and it was much more accurate and then i've just got some depth gauges these aren't super necessary if you're doing a really big production run it'd be quite good because you can get all the gauges quite quick but often i'll just revert to my digital calipers and these have rounded ends so that means they don't catch into the wood and i always use very light pressure when holding them like that and then turning if that was the tool turning in to get the right depth this is my spindle roughing gouge and I use this normally at the start of ones just to take away as much material as possible. It cuts in a lot of directions which is really nice. And to show you how little pressure is needed to cut with this, I'm here holding my fingers just really delicately but you can see how nice those curly shavings come off. And this is one of my skew chisels which I really like, it's really good for blocking out work as well. Here I'm cutting with a corner and you can see it leaves that sort of frayed leaving edge. The finish is still really nice but a better way is to do a reverse planing cut like this. We don't, we don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. So now we've got that nice straight taper we can actually mark out the wand using the storyboard. There you can see I've got a really sharp pencil just marking out all the key transition points. Now I wanted to show just how small this wand in is with a pencil. I think often when you're watching through screens you're really zoomed in and you can't appreciate how small the work actually is. This is a good little test here is just to try and split the pencil line. So when I'm turning something like this I will always work from right to left and that's basically to keep enough wood on the left side of the lathe because that's where it is driven from and that's where all the torque is coming from. If I, if I make that really thin to start with, it's got to take all the cutting force on to the right of it, if that makes any sense. And you'll notice I don't actually measure any depth for all these shoulders and fillets and that's because I know the outside of the wood is the perfect diameter because it was a straight taper, but measuring the inside is not worth it. With a lot of experience you can just learn by eye, see what is correct, if it needs to be a bit thinner, etc., and get all the proportions right. So, again, that just comes with a lot of experience and marking up accurately to start with. Right, that's the first stage of turning down, and I have to apologise because this wood is a bit too rotten, but it was the only silver birch I could find and get my hands on, and I just need to get this video done. It's also slightly damp still, which doesn't help with the cutting, or makes it easy to cut, but it means you get a bit more tear out. So you can see down here, it's gone a bit sort of wavy, which we should be able to get that out with sandpaper, but this is why it's so important to have sharp tools and use the correct tools, not none of this carbide nonsense, which is the devil's work. But you can see in that video, I was basically always cutting with a point where I could. So I've really struggled with getting the tool into here. You can see how small this is. That's my finger for comparison. And I'll try and gently sand this out. This shape's gone slightly off, so I'm annoyed about that. And you can see here just how much tear there is. And look, look how much twist there is. That's sort of going to come off soon. I've left this bit here just whilst I quickly sand up. I'm going to probably just use 240 grit and be really careful not to touch any sharp corners because that the sandpaper will just completely round them over and that takes out all these crisp lovely details which makes this one so nice now i've got to make a serious apology this pink gemstone in the middle should be about 14 and a half millimeters and that means this taper is one straight line taper as i showed earlier in the video the only rose quartz i could get was 17.7 millimeters this was advertised as 15 and i thought hey that's all right they won't know but 17.7 i know it's disappointing if you feel like unsubscribing go ahead i deserve it i've let myself down i've let you guys down i've let umbridge down and it's just a bit upsetting really now this is a little test piece i did earlier so it's going to sit like that and you can see it's just slightly bigger. It looks nicer than this monstrosity because this is made of resin <laughs> and it's got this metal rod going through it. But this should be a sphere, a ball. In the book it is sort of purple but it's definitely a sphere. So if you can find it in your heart to forgive me, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.
Sorry about this angle, the guy who's making this one sometimes forgets that people actually want to watch or that there's a camera there, which is surprising because the camera is right where my hands want to be the whole time. So when I'm sanding, I would try and use really light pressure and one of the key points is to never touch those sharp edges because the sandpaper will completely round it off instantly. And that's what gives the wand all its really nice detail. So this stage is one of my most satisfying aspects of wand making. Please let me know in the comments which part you actually like the most. But for me, I always like applying the stain or finish. It's just nice seeing the wood pop and all the colours come out. Now that first coat actually came out too red, so I'm just applying a second coat of a darker wood stain just to try and get that colour matching better. So making the handle of the wand has the exact same steps as making the top half basically. So here it is at 35 times speed, same sort of process, working from the right to the left. There's a few fiddly bits where I don't have small enough tools to get in there, so you've sort of got to change your technique. And this is my beautiful blue background. You see how nice that is. The silhouette is so obvious now compared to my previous background you'd be able to see in other videos. Now, once the stain has been dried fully, I can apply this cellulose sanding sealer. And basically the purpose of this finish is just to lock in that grain. You can see how much is actually coming back out onto the cloth from that. And again, once that's dried, I can then apply the wax finish. I'm just basically applying it really liberally here, just getting it into all the nooks and crannies but also trying to take out any sort of excess or residue wax. So this is back on the top half of the wand. I can finally turn off that sharp tip and it's really careful here. This is tiny, so I've got to hold it with my left hand just to keep it stable. Uh, I can actually sand it a little bit as well before parting it off. So I give that a quick sand just by hand before applying the rest of the finish. The next stage is to give the whole wand a buff. So I put some wax on this wheel and I'm just trying to get into all these nooks and crannies, hold the wand in all directions, just to try and get the best possible finish. Now you see this? This is not the world's smallest violin. It's the tip of the wand, I just broke it. Broken. But I'm just gonna glue it back on later. I think we can get away with it. Now we can finally join this wand together with a piece of rose quartz. As I said, I'm sorry this is a bit too big, but hopefully it shall suffice. I've got some JB Weld here. I've got to pierce this because it's so old, it hasn't been used in a long time and the end has hardened. I've got to try and guess the amount, then mix it together. Now if you like the style of video where I do some sort of commentary over it, please let me know in the comments how it looks because this has been a bit of a nightmare to make. It's sort of my first proper one and I always forget what I've said in the workshop and then I've been filming this alongside a TikTok in the same video so it's just been so confusing and hectic and taken about five times as long as I hoped. You're going to be doing some lines for me today Mr Potter. Okay, it's the morning after the night before. I don't really know if this is going to set, but we'll find out now. Well, I think it's stronger than the wood is, so we'll take that as a win. Okay, I sort of thought this might happen, because I think I should have probably just supported it when it was gluing, so I think it sort of dropped slightly. I think I'm just being a bit lazy, really. I confess myself disappointed. But from... That angle looks pretty straight, and that angle it looks pretty straight, so that's what I do the photos from. Right, I think this is the worst one I've done. <laughs> Excuse my voice, I've still got a bit of a cold. Quite upset that I didn't get that perfectly straight. You can see it's just wobbling. In terms of accuracy, I'm quite happy. So you see here in the middle how it's it's gone shorter, but this bit's actually fatter. But I think it looks better with the ball sort of thing, but I do wish I had that as the same, same width as the whole wand. The wood is not the best quality, 
not because it's birch because it's was rotten and still slightly damp so one of the issues with that is that you can see it got a bit of tear out here still but actually so does the resin one so that works <laughs> One of the annoying things I saw, I put too much wax on. So you see here, it's gone quite nice shiny and you've got all the crisp details. Where the grain's slightly torn and open, the wax will sit in and that's why it's slightly whiter. On this, oh, no! Hey, what can't you fix with super glue, hey? Okay, take two, I had to sand off the top of the wand to then re-glue it back together. But if you see there, you can actually see it's really, it's really all right. You can't see the seam join at all, so that's a pass. So as I was saying, the the wood was not the best and the wax has sort of got into the end grain that's why it's slightly whiter and you'll often see on old sort of antiques you see how it's darker down all the crevices but on the top surface it's sort of it's got that more reddy brown shiny color and that's basically because after years of polishing all the dirt and grime gets stuck in these crevices whereas when you polish it it actually goes sort of on the top and takes all the basically the top edge off so that's why that's shiny and you see that on old antiques or table legs anything like that really if you do work with gemstones or crystals and you'd like to help please get in touch because i'd like to i would like to make this wand again but i don't have the time and i need some better birch wood i think as well and to dry it better but yeah i just i can't afford to remake it and everyone likes people make mistakes so i'll leave it in the video it's a bit more honest so anyway now let's get this onto the wand wheel Or should I leave it as like a cross? I'm not in love with this. <laughs> 